In this week's episode, I continue with February Food Month, and I talk about my diabetic diet. I share a good sugar-free cake recipe, and we find out which foods Donna doesn't like. Welcome to Blog Oklahoma. I'm going to talk about something a little more serious today. Diabetes. This is something I have first-hand knowledge of. I am diabetic. This is a disease where our bodies do not process the sugars we intake properly, and it builds up in our blood, and this can cause all sorts of serious health problems. Just a few of the symptoms of diabetes are frequent urination, feeling thirsty all the time, extreme fatigue, blurry vision, you have cuts and bruises that heal very slowly, and you'll have pain or numbness in your hands and feet, all of which I've had the pleasure of having. (laughs) In 2012, about 29 million Americans had diabetes. In the show notes, I'll provide a link to the American Diabetes Association. There you can find out more information about diabetes and its treatment. I encourage you to go to this website and read up all about it. But please, above all else, seek the advice of your doctor. I control my diabetes with medication and diet under a doctor's supervision. I don't have to do insulin injections, and I don't always have to monitor my glucose levels. You know the test where you have to prick your finger and put a drop of blood on a test strip and stick it in a meter? (laughs) Meter? I actually have one of these meters and I will test occasionally, just not daily. I visit my doctor regularly and I have blood drawn, tested, and my doctor will adjust my medication appropriately. I'm happy to say, if you can be happy about having diabetes, my last A1C number, that's one of the glucose tests, uh, my last A1C number was 6.5. Anything below 7 is considered in control, and that's good. (laughs) Considering when I was first diagnosed, I was around an A1C of 8, and I hovered around 7 for years before we found the right combination of things to get it lower. Now this is food month, so let's talk about a diabetic diet. Again, I want to reiterate, always seek the advice of your doctor. The diet I follow was suggested to me by a dietitian and approved by my doctor. There, here's the really surprising thing. A good diabetic diet is no different than a regular healthy diet for everyone. <laughs> it's a diet of lean proteins, vegetables, whole grains, fruits, and it's low in saturated and trans fats. It's all about portion control. I haven't completely eliminated all forms of sugar from my diet, but I have cut any processed sugary foods. No candy bars, no marshmallows, no sugary sweetened anything, Uh, no Pop-Tarts, oh well. So basically anything made with white sugar, brown sugar, corn syrup, or honey is on the no list. But that's it more or less. It's wise to lower the amount of carbohydrates you take in, but not eliminate them. If I want to have a baked potato with my meal, I can have one. I'm not denying myself any foods, except for the sugary things I've mentioned, and to be honest, with a few minor exceptions, I haven't missed them. Again, that doesn't mean I can go overboard and overindulge in high glycemic foods like fruits and some vegetables. Portion control is important here. I can have an apple or some baby carrots, but I shouldn't eat a whole bag in one setting. I can enjoy a banana but more than two would be pushing it. Again, this is my diabetic diet. Your diet will be different. I have other diabetic friends who don't deny themselves anything. They eat sugary foods. They're also on insulin and have to continually test their blood all day. 
I get to take a handful of pills twice a day. I can't stress enough that you should follow the advice of your doctor when it comes to this. If you would like to see the diet plan that it was given to me by my dietitian many years ago, I actually still have it up on my personal website listed as the suggested meal plan for a hypoglycemic diet. I have a link to it in the show notes. Now, I don't follow that diet to the letter today, <laughs> no, but uh, it's been adjusted for me over the years. But it'll give you a good suggestion and a great starting point to have a conversation with your doctor. Oh, I have one more thing I want to mention, and this is just some friendly advice. If you're new to this kind of diet, the chance is you want to have as much sugar-free things as you can meaning stuff that is sweetened by artificial sweeteners. This includes things like a sugar-free candy and diet sodas. It's fine to have these sugar-free things every now and then, in limited quantities. But of course, that goes for all foods, really. <laughs> I keep some sugar-free candy in my desk drawer at work, and I'll have a diet Pepsi or Coke every once in a while. I just don't eat too much of this sugar-free stuff. Because if you do eat too much of it, you will regret it when you cross that line. In fact, on many of the packaged sugar-free things right now is written underneath the ingredients list a warning. And believe me, heed this warning. Excess consumption may cause a laxative effect. This week's Blog Oklahoma writing suggestion is to take part in Food Month and talk about your favorite food-related topic. I look forward to reading it. Are you someone who blogs in or about Oklahoma? Then you already qualify for Web Ring membership. Join Blog Oklahoma today. Want to know more about Blog Oklahoma? Then just explore the Web Ring and discover some of the best blogs and podcasts in the nation. Just visit blogoklahoma.com for more information. In this week's top five, we get to list the top five foods Donna really dislikes. Donna couldn't join us today, but she gave me her list. Here it is, the top five foods that Donna really dislikes. Number five, lima beans. Number four, squash. Really? She doesn't like squash? Squash is awesome. Oh, well. Uh, number three, black-eyed peas. Oh, she missed out the other day. I made black-eyed peas and tomatoes. They were great, but she didn't want any. Number two, fish. Yep, all kinds of fish. She just won't eat fish. That's really disappointing on Fridays. I'm eating fish all by myself. And the number one food Donna really dislikes is... Squid. Yeah, can't blame her there. Last week I shared a recipe for a cheesy chicken broccoli rice casserole that we really like. This week I thought I'd share a good dessert that both Donna and I like. It's a sugar-free cake recipe too. And Donna's not fond of the sugar-free. I'm the one that stuck with it, but uh, she actually likes this cake recipe. It's banana caramel cake. We found this recipe on the back of the box of some Pillsbury Moist Supreme Sugar-Free Classic Yellow Cake Mix. With it, you'll need one package of cake mix, half a cup of water, half a cup of vegetable oil, three eggs, two teaspoons of ground cinnamon, and one and a half cups of mashed bananas. Mix it all together. Put it in your cake pan and cook it in the oven at 350 degrees for about 35 minutes. When it's done, let it cool a little bit and then serve. It's great warm, but this is also great the next day. So remember that. Uh, you can top this uh, cake with some caramel syrup. Smucker's makes a great sugar-free caramel syrup. Now this is a great sugar-free cake, but I imagine you can make it with regular yellow cake mix if you don't want it to be sugar-free. So I hope you enjoy this cake recipe as much as we do. Oh, I have a little audio production update for you today. Um, I know I say this in a lot of episodes, if you hear any noise in the background, that's this or that. 
I do do some noise reduction before I publish. Uh, but this week, I've got two fans going on. One's the laptop, and another one's uh, just a fan to keep the room a little cooler than it is in here. And uh, even though I did the noise reduction, I still can hear some of these fans in the audio, so I apologize for that. Next week, I hope to uh, get this all settled out. Plus, I've moved stuff around on my desk. I have a brand new... Uh, boom style mic stand that I'm trying out here. I'm going to thump the mic. That was the mic stand. <laughs> and, uh, I'm trying this out. I do have a lot of hands free right now, so I can move around without thumping the microphone, which is great. But I've had to move my computer around a bit where I'm doing my recording. And I think I've got it too close to the microphone this time. So hopefully uh, the next episode, I will have everything moved where I am not hearing so much environmental noise. Hey, did you know we have our own cafe press store? Of course you did. I mention it every episode. But if you're new here, hey, we have our own cafe press store. There you can purchase a t-shirt, coffee mug, and other great items with the Blog Oklahoma podcast artwork on them. So please, just head on over to cafepress.com slash podcast. I've added even more great music to the Blog Oklahoma bonus playlist on Spotify. There is now well over 19 hours of music for you to enjoy. So please, just head on over to Spotify, load up the playlist, click random, and enjoy. I'll have links to this and more in the show notes at blogoklahoma.net. And thank you for listening to the Blog Oklahoma Podcast. I'm happy to announce as of February 19th, 2017, Blog Oklahoma has 917 registered Oklahoma bloggers. Your feedback is important, so please feel free to contact me with your comments or questions. You can get hold of me in a multitude of ways. Just visit blogoklahoma.net slash contact for more information. Check our show notes for all the links and bonus material from today's episode. This has been Kevin Latham for Blog Oklahoma. Until next time.